Today is the 12th of May, 2022. So I'm going to discuss in this particular lecture a fairly different viewpoint. Now, I am half Chinese and half mixture of different particular ethnic backgrounds for the most part in a few different areas and ways. And where certain individuals may easily be capable to notice in reference to my biological sister in comparison to myself, the reality is that my biological sister actually looks far more Asian than I do because of those realities. So sure, I can do my makeup a certain way, but that's pretty much it in comparison. Now, my bakung and my bakpu, which translates to great grandparents in Chinese, my bakung and my bakpu spent a lot of time with me because of being four years older than my biological sister. Additionally, because of the type of child I had been, which those who knew me in scuba diving, as well as in what is supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle in the years most specifically of 2011, would know as to the specific specialties to the education, as well as in reference to the um, electives for that comparison. So where my biological father was in the process of a lot of work as far as business was concerned as to the school of Bolivar, he didn't necessarily understand certain things and my biological sister was four years younger than me and far more interested in Broadway than she was as far as history and ancestry. And so there are those who understand that particular aspect in those references. Now, regarding my biological father, which is also my biological sister's biological father, He's first generation Chinese. He was born in the United States of America in 1951. And so in 1951, which is the time frame which the World War II situation still were as they were, the reality that his grandparents, which would be my Bukgung and my Bukpu, had escaped Mao Zedong. And so that was a starting point in the 1920s. So while there's the knowledge as to Tiananmen Square regarding the 1980s, that has to do with the time frame and reference to that particular British photographer or traveler, if I remember correctly, having gone to China and however long it took him to get to a British embassy to be capable to bring that forward. That situation that happened in Tiananmen Square, if I remember from what my Buck Pooh had said, had actually occurred in the 1970s timeframe, if not the 1960s, because of different combined factors. So those who would know what it would take to get to a different country's embassy, depending on the situations, would be a deciding factor in those references. And so while my biological father had been born in the United States of America, the reality of the situations at the time would bring forward that difference highly in that reference. And so he very well could have been a part of what would be known as the camps because then you additionally have not only World War II, which happened because of Pearl Harbor and the Asian population to the uh, Caucasian and African American communities would be very different. So basically I would guesstimate and because of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, I don't remember everything that I was taught in school, specifically about history. And so 
I wouldn't be surprised if because of what happened with World War II and the Japanese in that reference, though because of the GPS system where that actually could have stemmed from, the additional situations in regards of how Asians and certain Native Americans have a similar skin tone. Additionally, they have certain facial features that have attributes that are quite similar. And then there are the facts that the Indo-Pacific area has certain physical attributes as well as biology regarding the dioxyribonucleic formation. So dioxyribonucleic acid is a DNA strand. And in these DNA strands, there are certain attributes that are specifically to certain individual ethnic backgrounds. And so the Indo-Pacific area, whether in reference to the islands of Samoa and or the Indian Ocean area where you have India and China, as well as Japan and Vietnam, a few other locations, it has to do with the water supply. And so because of the water supply, there are certain attributes, I would guesstimate having been capable to be found, that has to do with the particular intake of food and water. And so where my biological father would have been born in 1951, from what I remember him saying, then you have the aspects of what was going on during the time frame after World War, or of and after World War II in addition to the predecessor time frame to the Korean War, which in my opinion, I would not be surprised if there were certain aspects that were not necessarily brought forward during World War II because of the GPS location system that would have been around at that time frame. And so when you look at the geographical latitude compared to longitude of Japan to Korea, I would not be surprised if there were certain uh, parallel, pun intended, geographical lines. And in those references, I've made, I actually had an argument with an individual in 2001. And it is an irony because of quite a few things. This was in San Antonio, Texas, at the Chili's near the UTSA out there. And this male had bumped into my stomach. There were a lot of situations. I was pregnant with my son at the time. And anybody who's ever been around a pregnant female, you know that it doesn't take much <laughs> to upset a pregnant female. Although being a biological female, I can be honest and say it really doesn't take much at all in a generalized sort of way, depending on whether it is AMS, DMS, or PMS time depends on how you are. <laughs> I can acknowledge that. I know that there are some who just really don't want to acknowledge that. And yet there are the reasons why it's called the cycles of the moon. And so, hmm. Anyway, so <laughs> in the particular references of the time frame that my biological father was a child, that would be in the 1950s into the early 1960s. So you have those who would know in the United States of America as to the average situations, not just for Native Americans during that time frame because of certain hypothetical assumptions. Additionally, you have the situations regarding Asians, whether they are Filipino, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Lao, because there is a bit of a difference, Tibetan, and v, uh, um, so on and so forth. There's a few others. And those particular situations where some people, maybe they didn't take into consideration the reality. So in what I was informed of because my Bakung and my Bakupu had escaped Mao Zedong, that time frame was much earlier as far as Tiananmen Square. You have to actually take a, again, take a look at what the average time frame for someone in this era, so this is 2022, there's a male named Edward Snowden 
and he would know how long it took for him to get to, I believe it's the Russian embassy that he would have gone to. And then there's the Wikipedia guy, if I remember correctly, and he had gone to an embassy. And so you have a few situations to take into consideration how long that took as far as the average time frame to then think about how back in the 1970s and 1980s as to the reporting of Tiananmen Square in the 1980s that length of time difference for that individual to actually get to a British embassy as far as the distance so in that time frame of what it would take to actually get from China, wherever, and so the wording is Tiananmen Square, to get from that area to a, a British or a Europe, UK type of embassy would probably take between three to five to seven years if walking if you take that in consideration. Because if you don't know the directional aspects, then you have to take that into consideration. And so that's the starting point to take a view as to the reality for the time frame of Tiananmen Square. Then when you add my biological father was born in 1951, well, his father was essentially born in the time frame of the 1930s, if I remember correctly. So his father, which would be my grandfather, had him and his sister, which is Linda. And so those individuals, I think he's the eldest, I think. And so there's that. Then there's the situations as to how they knew about Mao Zedong and the starting point of. And there were rumors as to Mao Zedong because there were people who didn't really think about what they were doing. Mao Zedong came from a fairly well-off family, but wasn't the favorite. And so the situations occurred during this time frame, and Mao Zedong just was as Mao Zedong was. So there are those who could be considered as sympathizers, and there could be those that could be in the realm of viewing, depending on the viewpoint. And so, the time frame came where World War II was occurring in that area. And by that point in time, you already had Asians, whether they were Cantonese and or Mandarin, that were noticing the shifts. And the Cantonese, which were considered upper class, and the Mandarin that were considered middle, lower class, were not taken as seriously in certain references. And so the situations of people going overseas for education had been as they had been. And the degrees became more predominant than the individuals who did the work. And there were other factors in reference to how the colleges were in the United States of America during the 1950s into the 1960s and 1970s. And those particular situations when the Vietnam War began after the Korean War, which was after World War II, which had begun because of the Pearl Harbor area, as far as Hawaii is concerned. And so, my biological father dealt with at Marlboro High School in New Jersey, these particular individuals who had problems with Asians in comparison. And so 
he proved himself and they backed off for that time frame, mainly because they were sent to the hospital. That's pretty much why they backed off because he handled business. He was trained by a Korean master as far as his third degree black belt in Taekwondo in comparison to what Americans were learning <laughs> in reference to karate. Um, <laughs> for those who know those particular references. And so when you have the authentic in comparison to karate, um, <laughs> it was as it was in those references. And so when he had been called to the mat, um, the people that he went to meet on the mat were told they were black belts in karate. And they had been given a black belt in karate. <laughs> and, um, and then they met my biological father who had earned <laughs> his third degree black belt in Taekwondo by a Korean master in comparison <laughs> to karate. <laughs> they didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Realistically, they didn't. And he was kind. He gave them warnings. Um, they didn't accept those warnings. They thought he was being arrogant. Then, you know, it, it took the whole football team to get the, the fighting to stop. <laughs> Mainly getting the coaches to stop talking. <laughs> because Mike was willing to continue handling the situation and so the football team went and had to go and like because the karate wasn't the same <laughs> i'm not saying <clears throat> that there are certain individuals who might have an understanding in different references what i am saying is you know, there's different metaphors that can be used. <laughs> and it is what it is. So, you know. <sighs> Those uh, high school coaches, um, they, they, they were introduced to the emergency medical services <laughs> truck <laughs> as well as a hospital and some doctors when um, my biological father was done so you know it was as it was um, because that's that's the difference of training by far and uh, and in the differences of training you know, you do have a difference regarding my type of scuba diving in comparison of civilian recreational scuba divers as to the reasons why I didn't really go into many details back in the year 2009 because there were those who thought that they knew better in comparison to me. And so that was back then and in this particular reference of how the times have changed in regards of Mao Zedong. Um, it was a large situation overall where these college students had thought they had done the research correctly when they were in college, if they had even gone to college because there were those who 
wanted to pretend and not actually tell their uh, parents the truth. And then anybody who's ever met a pissed off Asian parent, um, <laughs> Like is kind at times when you take in consideration that um, my grades, whereas my grades were, yes, partially because of Mike being my biological father, uh, my grades were also told to my buckong and my buck poo. So, um, you know. <laughs> yes, I was frightened to have to bring certain things as far as that's concerned because mainly because yes there's the starting point of that but then mike would tell my buckung and my buck poo and so they were from china so you know <laughs> yeah 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 and i'm the firstborn and so you know that education yeah, yeah, takes that to a whole other level. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really truthfully haven't understand how, even now in 2022, I personally still cannot understand how anybody could be jealous of me. Mainly because I know what my childhood is. <laughs> and so... <laughs> These people I've met in different areas that have claimed that their parents are strict. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you only have parents to worry about? Oh. Wow, what is that? <laughs> I have. <laughs> and, then, and then you got to remember, you know, those... So people have grandparents that their grandparents are usually, you know, they're stricter, but they're kinder and all that. Great grandparents <laughs> from mainland China. No. <laughs> it's a different level. Don't be jealous. I haven't understood anybody who's ever been jealous <laughs> at all. It's one of those really, I don't understand why you'd be jealous of that. <laughs> I knew them. Yes, they were fantastic people. And I knew not to get on their bad side. That was kind of... <laughs> and so my grades were extremely important. And so, you know... I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. <laughs> and I went from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math. You just think about, th th there are people who have told me they thought I was self-deprecating. It's like, you don't understand. <laughs> there were people that were like, don't be so hard on yourself. And it's like, if you understood. <laughs> what my background is i don't have like i think like, how do you unlearn that good luck that doesn't work out the same way i'm just saying <laughs> because then there's the additional factors of being the northeast yeah just 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 pointing this out there and so Mike had dealt with that, and I don't know whether or not he remembers certain factors regarding the possibilities of certain um, camps during the 19, and I don't mean YMCA camps. I'm, I'm giving the translation of the camps during the time frame between World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War as far as Asians are concerned. I'm sure there have to be individuals who would have the knowledge to bestow in reference to how that was in the United States of America, of actually within on US soil, those particular factors. And so um, don't know what the age difference would be and those references, not being rude, but having the capacity to put that into words. The reality though is my biological father was born in 1951 
and it was in the area of New York City. So you have the tri-state area and it's near the water. In the reference of World War II, you have the situations regarding Pearl Harbor, obviously, near the water. So Korean War and Vietnam War, not the same, though there is certain similarities regarding the location. And so when you take those factors into consideration, there wasn't the same way to clarify and verify the backgrounds before making judgment calls because there wasn't that available option. When you really take in consideration the technological advances, especially since the 1980s to now in the 2022 year. So my biological father, who ironically really didn't want to get into technology stuff, I had given him the DSLR camera, as well as I think it was four or six different extension lenses and uh, different flash type of medium and then the bag and everything because I thought that it would be something that would be of interest to him, especially in reference to how he had worked with film photography, which is an irony. With my 26 scuba diving certifications, I earned my digital photography first, as far as my underwater scuba diving certification. And my last, one of my last ones was a film <laughs> photography. And so the backwards aspect, because he had begun in film, and then I got him the digital. It's a bad joke. It's okay. I can make fun of myself. Nonetheless, that it would be something different. And the mechanisms of, because I know that my biological father had been certified in the School of Bolivar. The irony of ironies and other references regarding <sighs> those particular types of so adult consenting lifestyle community, I had given warnings about my biological mother being nosy, and I gave warnings in reference to how my biological sister was. So there's that, <laughs> and I made attempts. So that was as it was, nonetheless. <laughs> Yeah, that's something for those individuals to take into consideration. Mm hmm Yes, yes. So, um, <laughs> I made attempts to clarify and verify and there were those who didn't take me seriously. So, nonetheless, in reference to the rise of Mao Zedong, he had come from a middle class, fairly middle, um, family, somewhat upper, but middle in the overall, and wasn't the favorite, and, but had earned on his own in comparison. Didn't rely on them, made sure to earn, and dealt with certain situations, but didn't really make that concerted of an effort to getting involved with what was going on in China at the time. At that point, they were still semi-emperor-ish, semi-democracy-ish sort of ways. And the nobility class was still fairly known. And so as Tiananmen Square, well, that was more along the lines of in the 1960s. The late 1960s, early 1970s is realistically when Tiananmen Square actually occurred in comparison to the guy who was capable to get his way to the British area as far as the embassy or whatever equivalent of wording. And so if it took him 
years, which it probably would depending on where the specific location as to getting to those areas, that would be as that would be because of. So that's something to take into consideration when it comes to timing. And a lot of that had to do with because of the reality of what was going on in the United States of America as far as the health situation. So in 2020 and now even into 2022, there's the COVID situations and those particular factors as to different situations that you could refer more to the 1980s, 1990s to the tri-state area as to what was in China during that time frame because of time in the United States of America referencing a few college students as to how those situations were during that time frame and how the viewpoints were because of the ways individuals in college campuses had been. And so while the more well-known factors are how hippies had gone after military guys and how military guys had seen other Asians. And so then there's that regarding those particular factors, which because of certain physical attributes, the misunderstanding between the difference between a Native American and an Asian because of certain complexion issues that are fairly similar. And so it kind of snowballed into a larger avalanche of an impact regarding several situations. Well, when Mao Zedong was found, and this is what I was informed of regarding my book and my book Pooh, when Mao Zedong was found, there was a lot of stuff that had to go on to essentially verify that he was him because of the way it was back in the 1900s in comparison. And so when these other situations occurred and it developed over time, there were guys that got around Mao Zedong and had very much known that was a leader the entire time. Some of the choices that went forward were because of other sectors in comparison to Mao Zedong's orders themselves because of how that actually went. And so where individuals have whatever choices to wording in reference to Mao Zedong, it has a lot more to do with what he survived in comparison to what he himself did, which yes, what he himself did, but in what the actualities are. So you have the knowledge of the CCP. The CCP formed during the time frame ish because of a few situations. So you have more of a face of the movement because of what had occurred to the amount of time. All of these individuals in reference to the occurrences, there were too many to count after a certain point because you had all of these people who would go not just to the United States of America, though other countries to colleges. They'd come back and whether or not they actually earned the degree because of certain situations, they'd get back and then there were certain factors. And because people needed to take responsibility for their choices, well, that was the big problem is that a bunch of people didn't want to take responsibility for their choices and the larger impacts of. So these groups and groups and areas of that had needed to accept responsibility for the choices of their actions, they had cost the country of China so many lives, so much damage because of their choices. And there were so many different groups and sections and so on and so forth 
that the governing areas of these locations, as well as the country itself, were not willing to take any more losses because of these different groups, these different sectors, and all of these, <laughs> this is true, situations that were such a conglomerate that the CCP had gotten together with other individuals and groups and companies to actually clarify and verify some of the stuff because certain things just didn't make any sense. Well, they were capable to get the information. And this is back in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, before the 1950s, 1960s time frame. And so while some people tried to subvert certain things, they started then rioting. This is what I was informed compared to whatever, I don't know what details. And so by the time it got to a certain point, everybody else had been tired of walking on eggshells because they were in that metaphor. They just weren't willing to constantly just tiptoe because it was just more stressful than it was work where they could just live life, have these situations, you know, so-and-so knows so-and-so of so-and-so of so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so can't speak with so-and-so, but so-and-so needs to ask so-and-so, but so-and-so says so-and-so of so-and-so, and that sort of web of situations that kind of was like a bureaucratic situation, but in China. And so while the United States of America was dealing with what the United States of America was dealing with, every country was dealing with whatever they were dealing with. It's not like China or the United States of America or other areas weren't the only ones, but they were in their areas for the physical location. So in this reference of Mao, he didn't really come to power. He did, but he didn't. It was the situations that he himself had put together, people had verified. And so he kind of was a, a bit of a recluse. He didn't actually want to be in front of a lot of stuff because he had already been through what he had been through. And so the CCP kind of made it happen is how that occurred because they knew that he was kind of, he, not kind of, he was the only one who could explain it. And so because he was the only one who could explain anything, as, and not, I shouldn't say anything, he was the only one who could explain certain situations that he himself knew. And other people would be capable to give supporting evidence and supporting testimony. But as far as what he himself knew, he was the only one. There wasn't anybody else that they could ask. And when it was so much shortly before, as, as I was explained by my buck under my buck poo, as it was explained to me, when it got to the point where all of the conglomerates, everybody had so many questions and they needed the answers, but because of certain, what would be considered as bureaucracy was so overbearing that they couldn't really ask Mao. They could give these, for lack of a better word, signs for Mao to give some, like to essentially kind of trigger some details, but it wasn't ever to the level that they had needed the answers to. In some references it was, and in other references it would be what it would be. And so you have a version in regards of uh, Prophet Joseph Smith as to the uh, Angel Moroni's Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, where Joseph Smith, the prophet, he writes to these varying areas 
and these different locations and then other people write in their witness testimony for the minimal of regarding certain references for those who understand that. Well, it's a different version regarding Mao. It is certain similarities, very much so. The irony as far as the dates as well, when you take in consideration the 1800s. Because what is time? Is time linear? Because when you take consideration back then in the 1800s, what is considered the actual date? How do you define the year? For one area to another, is it the 1900 then, but because of certain educational backgrounds, what is the actual year? Where is the location of compared to? So you have to take that in addition regarding the specifics as to the time frames to those books. So when you add the situations regarding Tiananmen Square, where it was reported in the 1980s, well, here, here's an example regarding my journal blog, the Ornery PSA. I have given the references to finding a silver lining and finding the silver lining. And there are certain situations which have specific dates. Then there's a lot of situations that don't have specific dates because especially in reference to finding the silver lining, how I could see a multitude of depending on. So in that reference, okay, well, I could see where in the update section, I'd have to go into certain details and give more specific time frames and give a different perspective as to depending on. So while in reference to more specifically the relationship factor well those particular situations i obviously depending on the when in reference from 2009 onward that is a different viewpoint than to the time frame before 2009 because of finally in that reference of being capable to make a choice for myself despite the situations, though I guess, depending on, you know, those involvements from individuals that were not invited. So it depends on what's considered as. Personally, for me, it would be an informed choice in comparison. So as long as it's an informed consensual choice compared to other people knowing and then that sort of stuff. Well, that's not an informed consensual choice, obviously, because only one being informed, that doesn't give the consent and the other reference at all. In my opinion, some people can think otherwise, if they were to be honest, I doubt that they would be okay with certain things if it was a reverse situation. So in reference to any female, who could have hypothetically had that involvement, if you were to have a male do that to you in that exact same way, would you consider that as consent? Would you consider it as informed consent or would you consider otherwise? That is another difference between a feminist and those types of feminazis. In my opinion, and so those types of females that wouldn't see a problem with that unless it was actually explained, well, then there's those situations as well. Because how you don't see that, that's the reality. And then you have the additional factors in reference to China and those situations and how certain class systems were having issues because of genuinity comparatively and those factors of clarifications and needless problems because of the um, business look in comparison to the actualities of connection. 
And instead of looking at what was actually important, they looked at viewpoints to perceptions instead. And because of that, there were other situations that led to Tiananmen Square because of. Because when you take those considerations as more important than to life, then that's a repercussion of those choices. And while some people didn't really possibly think about that, there's many reasons in reference to how Tiananmen Square had become as it had. There was many reasons how Mao Zedong got into the location position that he was in. And it had to do not because of himself. It had to do with everybody else. It's, it's a misconception and it's a misappropriation. So where some people know situations regarding, for example, Hitler and, and his background, Mao was not in that capacity where Hitler sought to actually be that way, Mao did not. Mao Zedong did not actually want to be in front of anything because of everything that Mao Zedong had been a part of. This is a, an ironic stereotype to certain types of Asians where they don't necessarily want or need to be in that role. They don't actually have, there are those who do but they really don't want to. It's, it's, it is, I would guesstimate, it's a fairly natural Asian attribute where they kind of just, it's okay, you can, you go do with that. I don't really want to be out front. Not that I don't care if I have to, I have to, but I don't really, like, I don't really, 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 really want or need to because, you know, that's a different level because most Asians that are raised a certain way they know what that translates to. So where others think any publicity is good publicity, Asians are, especially if you're raised a certain way, uh, the, you don't necessarily view things in that same capacity. You don't necessarily want to deal with that additional scrutiny on top of what you've already grown up with. And so depending on what you grew up with, you don't really, really want to get into that. And so, depending on, so when it came to Mao, he literally had to be pulled out to actually be in front of the areas. He, for those who understand the Uzumi legend in the female capacity and Amaterasu, so Amatera Su had hidden herself in this reference because she was dealing with whatever she was dealing with. She went into this cave sort of metaphor and Uzumi had to go and do all this sort of stuff to get Amatera Su to come out. Well, you had certain references in that way to Mao Zedong. So, Amatera Su in this legend comes out seeing Uzumi because she hears the laughter. And once fully out of this particular area, the people kind of close this cave off. So that way Amatera Su cannot run back in to go hide because of the situations. She had no idea of her own beauty in certain references regarding Amatera Su. And so in this particular metaphor, Mao Zedong had not known that there was any, anything regarding the background being of importance. It was realized, but it wasn't really, it wasn't that it wasn't known that the background was important. It was more along the line, it was more of a humility in comparison to, even if, I don't know what footage there is of Mao Zedong, as far as videos or even just pictures. If, if I, from what I can remember regarding what my Buck Gong and my Buck Poo showed me, 
he's not really someone who sought to be in front of the camera. He actually had to be pulled in by the larger guys that were taking care of certain things. He had to actually, actually had to be put into a positionary location in order for these guys to be like, yes, and here's that. This is the reality. We know this truth. And so at first, from what the explanations were, it was a bit of an uproar in the areas for those who recognized Mao. And in other areas, it was one of those, you had the knowledge. So it kind of was a back and forth. It was a slow process because of what had to come out because of how newspapers were back then in comparison to this day and age with modern technology. And so as the information became pouring out, because at first with the initial pictures and videos during the time frame and radio, there wasn't the same. So on the radio aspects, when those in China were informed that knew Mao Zedong, that was one response. Those who had the knowledge of the newspapers, which didn't really have pictures usually, it was usually just the writings, that had a different response regarding those who knew Mao Zedong. And then there were what levels of which ones who had television. And that was a very different response to Mao Zedong. And as time went forward, and that includes the knowledge of the Korean and the Vietnam War, after World War II, the information regarding Mao Zedong um, became more well known across the area. And so in Beijing and Hong Kong, it was known who Mao Zedong was. And a lot of the higher ups didn't really want to speak with Mao Zedong because they were under one impression until these situations started becoming more well known. And that was where Hong Kong and Beijing then got extremely upset with the people that had given them what information they were given. They were under the impression that they had been capable to know the truth from their people that had given them whatever details. And so as the information from the verifications that were actually truthful. At the time that Beijing and Hong Kong were informed, there were rumors of the difference, but a lot of them were just, oh, well, it's just a rumor compared to what their people were telling them. They didn't know that their people were wanting of, to have a viewpoint in comparison. They were playing chess in comparison to paying attention to life. And so these individuals, and especially Beijing and Hong Kong, were not as well informed as they thought they were. And those who know how perception is, especially to Asians, they are very particular. And so in Hong Kong and Beijing, these other people made them look bad because of what their people were telling them in comparison. And so in Beijing and Hong Kong, they were not happy because of what had occurred. So when it comes to Tiananmen Square, it actually has more to do because of getting Mao. 
So there were those who didn't know that Mao Zedong was actually in the area. And Tiananmen Square had to do with, it, there's a multitude of why. But one of the situations had to do with actually getting Mao Zedong himself because of all these other factors that these other people in reference to informing Beijing and um, Hong Kong, the truth. So these people were trying to do certain things and Beijing and Hong Kong wanted their answers. They didn't necessarily want to have problems. They wanted answers to their questions. And Tiananmen Square, these individuals were like, well, we want this and we want this. And Mao Zedong was completely unaware that there was any involvement of anything. Mao Zedong, ironically, actually was not directly involved with these different factors. And so Hong Kong and Beijing, they wanted to know certain things, whereas Tiananmen and certain surrounding areas didn't necessarily want to give up Mao Zedong because they had their own questions. However, Beijing and Hong Kong, out in a lack of better wording, they outranked Tiananmen and certain areas. And so when Tiananmen Square essentially didn't really want to give up, to the Beijing and Hong Kong areas with the CCP, well, they got Mao Zedong. They, they, they had to go in the way they had to go in to get Mao Zedong to be capable to speak with because these other areas, all these different sects, had positioned themselves in certain tribal ways. So depending on these different sectors, they had questions themselves. They wanted understanding. And instead of the ways having been learned from in prior situations, the areas of Beijing and Hong Kong had found out that these similar situations to before became as much as they had. So you had this conglomerate of all these different, but at the same time of, surrounding Mao Zedong, not necessarily in a negative capacity. They all wanted these answers. They all had questions. And yet Beijing and Hong Kong had more people that had more questions that needed these answers but in Tiananmen being where Tiananmen is in comparison to Beijing and Hong Kong and all these other connected factors and factories, they, the people of Tiananmen Square didn't necessarily want to do that. They wanted their own areas brought forward too. Well, they, they were because of these college students mainly. The college students that wanted to do what was done in the United States of America during those particular protests and riots, depending on your viewpoint. They wanted to have that themselves and Beijing and Hong Kong had already dealt with that they knew what certain factors were going to be instead. And so where Tiananmen Square had some protests and some riots, they were not equipped the way they thought they could be regarding those particular types because they didn't see the larger impacts as to what actually occurred because they only had what little levels of, and they didn't have the pictures 
to the levels of what occurred. They had ma mainly the writing. So what writing they had, it was intriguing. It was something they thought would be easier. They didn't get to the larger details. And so the larger details of what actually occurred, not just during the time frames of, but the connected aspects. Well, these different situations thought it would be a good idea to kind of goat the Tiananmen Square area because they weren't as well versed. They thought that it wouldn't be that big of a deal because they had already, but they weren't paying attention to these areas. And so Mao Zedong was more of a recluse, which in some ways actually as messed up as it is to say, there were many more lives saved than there were not regarding Tiananmen Square because of the facts that when it was realized that it was Mao that they had needed the answers from, when certain situations were as they were and as it became understood that it was not something to be as a game for a lack of better terminology, certain individuals started realizing that it wasn't a game. It wasn't funny. It was not a practical joke. And so you have Hong Kong and you have Beijing that have these needs that have to be met in a responsible manner. And you have individuals in these college-ish areas that don't see the larger impacts. And so there's these other situations where they only have what minimal, teeny tiny, but replayable aspects of what video footage as to the protests and riots in different areas in comparison to the larger amount of damages that had occurred because of how much the costs were to clean up. So you have in uh, New York City, for those who remember the 99%. Well, all of these people showed up to New York City, can't remember what year it was, and the local police had to deal with this. The state police had to deal with this. The federal police had to deal with this. And then the streets had to actually be cleaned up from this in comparison because of certain details. So it wasn't much to get a permit. It, it, the, the fee wasn't that large. The other factors though, regarding local police and the different levels of the state police and the different levels of and the federal police or law enforcement, what have you, and the different levels of and the safety and the sanitation in the streets because of these different for a different viewpoint to other protests and rallies, it wasn't taken into consideration. So that's, that's also how you have a lot of de democratic areas, because then you had to call in the National Guard. So I don't know in reference to what occurred in New York City during those um, protests slash riots, referencing the 99 percenters to the 1%. However, I also don't know the larger details in those references regarding that fuller viewpoint of the protests. I don't, I only followed along with certain information that came in from the news. So I do know that there were tent cities in New York City that were wanting the answers in whatever the references were to the 99 percenters. Um, 
I know that that occurred sometime in 2015, maybe, situation, and 2016, but it was in the summertime, if I remember correctly, because New York City gets cold. And it was a very limited amount of time compared to other areas because it goes with the weather. And so what is of comfort to a certain level? How do you get that? I don't have the answers for this particular lecture to give that. However, in reference to a different time frame regarding China and Tiananmen Square, you kind of have certain factors in that reference to the college students. And so, um, that's kind of a shortened, brief aspect that my biological father may not have taken in consideration because of the time frame between World War II and that, because my Buck Gong and my Buck Pu had escaped from Mao Zedong and how that uprising was going at the time frame in the 1920s, 1930s. That's when they had shown up in the United States of America with their child at the time. So Mike having been born in 1951 and the way that particular physical attribute regarding certain viewpoints of Asians and Native Americans, it was fairly difficult for my Bakong and my Bakpu to have a spouse that would get in reference to my biological father and his sister's birth because of the physical viewpoint. Despite later how Asians became more physically appealing to certain individuals, the safety aspects were far more difficult regarding not necessarily matchmaking, but kind of in those references. So, and then the health situations during the time frames, and so then there was the 1950s into the 1960s, and what happened during World War II and the Korean War and the Vietnam War. So then there was the situation as to how Anna, my biological mother, and my biological father got together. And there were a bunch of hippies in the 1960s and 1970s that knew about Mao Zedong. They knew before the 1980 publication of Tiananmen Square which is something that I don't think as many people understood. My biological mother did not see a problem with Mao Zedong. With the 1960s and 1970s, you have certain individuals who look towards certain others from other countries and didn't pay attention to the backgrounds as to those factors. So my biological mother in the 1960s going into the 1970s knew about Mao Zedong, knew about the history behind. She wasn't the only one. That was in New Jersey. You have situations in certain larger cities, such as New York City, but also Chicago, who had heard stories about Mao Zedong. And so you have a few situations to take into a larger consideration as to the news media because of the publication. So the British photographer in reference to 1980 and Tiananmen Square, well, all you have to do is take a look at the typical media from China during the time frame of the 1980s. 
Compare that to that picture from Tiananmen Square. As far as whatever movies, whatever television, whatever photography. If that particular picture from Tiananmen Square, as far as the tanks and that one individual, to my suggestion in this video lecture of the time frame of 12 May 2022, if I am accurate, again, you can go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, for certain other references. In my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, among other situations, if accurate, and you were to do a digital but photography for the film version of whatever the terminology would be to carbon dating in reference to the overall situations. Tiananmen Square, as far as that one picture, if I'm accurate, it should be in line with what my Buck Gung and my Buck Poo had told me about the 1960s, 1970s in reference to that situation regarding Tiananmen Square when it actually, actually occurred in comparison to the British publication of which would be in the 1980s. So, that's that's uh, that's a starting point for this particular official YouTube video. I'm sure I'll be doing a few others regarding those particular factors. Um, but yeah, that's something to take into consideration because that's something I don't think some people took into view as to the, I don't know what it would be considered as, but the film version of digitalizing pictures to the actual time frame, especially because of enhancements, you take that into the carbon dating version of to bring forward to the actual historical accuracy of what would be considered as archaeological carbon footprint dating as to certain structures in the various areas of the earth as far as geographical locations but the wording of that through technology because of those backgrounds and the pictures of and telling the differences to the camera style because some digital cameras can actually be compared to the digital pictures to fading. And then if in that reference, the program capacity to distinguish the difference to that because of those time frames, because when did the digital cameras become larger in the United States of America compared to other locations, such as military, law enforcement, but also the starting point of. And so other situations to that particular consideration of carbon dating in a technological way as to pictures and film and cinema photography because of when you have the version of Hollywood in China, though the time frame to the actual videos to give that reference during that time frame of those differences in the film as well as digital and those time frames to those comparisons. So if in Hollywood, you can tell certain references compared to China and those particulars, which viewpoint as to the cinema, photo, cinematography would there be to the visual as well as audio effects as to those particular differences to the time frame of? So, and you have Hollywood compared to the East Coast, Northeast mainly, compared to, for those viewpoints. 
as to those um, triangulations to the kind of overall because of people being capable to travel depending on who they were at that time frame as far as employment as well and their experiences so thanks for tuning in to my official youtube channel official youtube video today the 12th of may 2022 probably something some people might not have necessarily thought about in other references though i suppose maybe there is that bit of a background of mine that makes sense so 12th of may 2022 it's a thursday and so maybe that's something to think about in a different capacity i don't know if others have really put that into a thought process before though the very well-known image few images of tenement square would be something that those who have that knowledge point and then obviously there's modeling pictures and television possibly and videos as far as movies that would be capable to assist that triangulation of the overall when you add the news media in the Northeast, as well as Chicago, especially because of certain similarities as a, an additional leg to that understanding. So you guys have a good day. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Go check out my journal blog and look around my website and you guys have a good day. Thanks for tuning in.